did 20 in a row? What the this hell, guy's dude? This guy's a beast. He, he's a proper. <laughs> Oh my yeah. god! That's insane. Wait, you know, you know what's crazy? There's some, uh, there's definitely some sus shit happening on Southeast Asia server sometimes. Because when I'm playing like late night pub games, um, sometimes I get like uh, players who have like what, 50, 60 predicted games in a row. I'm not really sure what's going what on the there. Hell? But uh, I think if there's anyone with a legit predict streak, it might just be this guy. Yeah, right. The thing about this Disruptor Tidehunter lane is, you know, you said that he can brush off the Thunderstrike. What about the rest of Disruptor's abilities? Kinetic Field, Glimpse, yeah. there's no way Tidehunter's getting away from that. And all of a sudden, you're trying to run away from Monkey King, but you're more or less stunned because of Kinetic Field. Like, there's no escape. You have to man up against the Monkey King. So, I'm going to be yeah. curious to see if Insania goes for, like, a Thunderstrike. Glimpse, kinetic field, uh, max and glimpse, maybe not getting that point in the Thunderstrike level two, and instead focusing on kinetic field because all of a sudden you have kill potential. Curious to see how it goes, right? I mean, my clear read, or, or at least my expectation this game is that rest farmers, if they can buy the time to get to their BKBs, that's when they can fight because up until that point, bruh, Team Liquid. Way too much control, way too much yeah. magic damage. All these, you know, boxy spells coming in, the static storms are going to be game-ruining. And it's not really something that Xantic can stand up into. Queen of Pain, very much a Feast of Famine mid laner. We'll also have to see whether Pablo and the, you, you know, Handskin are going to come into the mid lane, make sure they get priority on those runes. If we understand this correctly, Xantic probably sees this Queen of Pain matchup as one that's advantageous, but it didn't really stop Liquid from still bringing Nisha here. So maybe something like the, the tr triangle stacks, small camp stacks just around the relevant jungle area. That could be what they're playing for here for this TA. I mean, it's kind of like what you said to me earlier, Sneeze, when we were talking before the stream. Uh, if you're not confident playing against your counters, how good are you really on that hero? And yeah, I don't think there's true. any and question that Nisha's a competent, very good Templar Assassin. Yeah, without doubt. We'll see uh, whether they're able to capitalize on his skill set in this particular game. For now, at Xantic, taking an absolute beating, but that's kind of to be expected. I went for the early level in the Scream, which, you know, some people might be thinking, Yo, why isn't he getting Shadow Strike level 1? You need to burn those refractions. Well, how often do you see TAs get refraction level 1? Be real, right? Uh, what TA wants to do in these early yeah. levels is shove the wave, double wave up and press, pressure you at your own tower. And Xantic just has to do everything. Use almost his entire mana pool just to try and clear that out and match up. And that's one thing the TA doesn't necessarily care about is her mana pool, right? It's really not going to be a case where Nisha's going to run out of mana for refractions, run out of mana for melt. Very low cooldown mana cost, especially with that bottle. Xantic might be in some trouble here, eating a lot of Psy Blades. It's going to be a rough few waves for him, and it's not going to get much better, I don't think. Yeah, I think the sponsor tag for him is how he's probably feeling right now. Just a little <laughs> yeah. bit of despair and not the type that he likes. I know he's a queen of pain then to that kind of thing, but you know, you still want to come out of the gate swinging on the side of uh, Liquid, and the TA getting off to a good start is a great sort of uh, entry into that uh, part of the game. Like we mentioned, Rest Farmers, I'm interested to see how well this Gyro and uh, CM are doing because I just think, you know, you need to put on pressure on this Brewmaster. You already knew it was going to come out. You already knew it was going to be contested. For now, 33 is still able to hold his own. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's going fine for 33. It's not the easiest lane, but he's 8-0. And, and he's got some last hits to his name and it's only the first yeah. few waves. Why not? Hey, he's used up all of his tangos, unfortunately, but that is just gonna happen. Right, that, uh, that happens every now and then. Call out more and you're fine. Maybe the double bracers is enough. Maybe you don't even need another batch of tangos. Yeah, and uh, the scariest part about this lane is if 33 tags you with a Cinder Brew, like we're seeing here, Boxy, grab him with a Blood Grenade, just throw out a uh, Brambles, which he doesn't have yet because still level 1, but feeling strong enough to just run down this DM first blood. You've just lane counter who? 33 blood. just slaps Thanks you down the sides. CM is one of those heroes that you can't get out of position on, right? It is impossible to run away. You are so incredibly slow, especially now with blood grenades being introduced into the game. Well, saying like it's new. Yeah. Uh, it's impossible on these like 280 movement speed heroes to run away from any sort of early engagement. Yeah. I mean, that's what made Brewmaster so sufficient, but Handskin on the TP back, jumps into the mid lane, catches Nisha off guard. So overall, not too bad. And at Xantic, this is what he desperately needed. The bottle refill as well. 
Yeah. Very good. Very good movement from Handskin, which is to be expected of this That's player, okay. I think, right? This is uh, probably the most experienced player on the side of Rest Farmers, I dare say. Yeah. And uh, also a player who... I, I don't know whether this is cruel to say, but I feel like it's been a while since he tasted main stage success, right? Sure. Yeah, after that alliance run that they were basically dominating Western Europe DPC on, uh, he hasn't really found his footing on any other stacks, uh, largely, you know, not participating on any international level tournament. And, you know, for these players, uh, I mean, shared as well, all these stories are kind of similar, right? Where you've made your mark, regionally at least, in Western Europe. Yeah, there's no doubt that you're of a certain caliber, but clearly not enough to hit that next level. And that's what they're going to try and prove this qualifier. Yeah, and they've kind of already, not necessarily proved it in the last qualifiers, but they've got people's attention now, for sure. Yeah, not just uh, some random stack, that's for sure. Um, yeah. And they might be altless now, but uh, prior to this, they were playing on what? Like Lunar Galaxy? Yeah, sure, some of them are smaller stacks, but oh, I have to hold that thought as turn 3. Going in for another bar room brawl. Beating off the Shad now. Has a Lotus and Wands as well if he needs to sort of turn that around. One key thing about this particular patch is some of these early skirmishes, we have to keep an eye out on the Wand cooldowns and the Stick cooldowns because those got increased by a ton. Yeah, speaking of the patch, I want to get your opinion on this Crystal Maiden chain with the Crystal Clone. I think it's pretty significant. Yeah, I mean, maybe not so much for the early laning stage, which is sure. what you're largely picking CM for, uh, or at least one of the big strengths for her. But yeah, later down the line, I think Crystal Clone was just giving you way too much value, right, for the low yeah, mana oh, cost that it is. I think CM's whole spiel has always been, you have great spells, but they all come at a huge mana cost, blast off slightly off the mark, Pablo goes wide on it, and the Monkey King can just jump back to safety. Realistically thinking, especially with uh, Insania and the Wings, it would have been fine there, just throw down a Kinetic Field, but yeah, yeah, dodging away from unnecessary damage. There's that glimpse back, like we talked about, nothing that Zibe can do about that. Yeah, but also nothing that Mickey can really do to close Fair. the distance, especially yeah. with Pablo being so annoying with the Sticky Bomb, right? And even though Mickey has the boots, it's just not enough. The slow percentage is way too high. Does have that Orb of Corrosion too on Mickey, so speaking of slows, he's gonna have a little bit more in the tank for dealing with this Tidehunter. Oh, Handskin. Nice TP he's out. Fine. Yeah, heads very up heads up play. Same wave. I length, think that's kind of what us. you. Yeah, we're, we're basically saying the same thing. Uh, straight out of the gates, though. CS wise, nobody's really suffering, right? There, there hasn't been anyone that's been shut out of the lane. And I kind of feel like that favors Liquid because the only thing stopping you from going on your little tempo bullet train on, on the TA's back is if you do get smacked away too hard in these laning situations. I guess the one big situation that emerged from the laning stage so far is that Xantix having a decent time after that hand skin rotation, right? So we want to see what he's going to do with it. Maybe a 8 minute power rune or maybe an early use of the Sonic Wave to get a kill on Mickey or something like that. We'll have to look, wait and see. First it comes with securing runes. And that's going to be a big priority. Shaggy's left alone down here. Yeah, Insania comes to the Twin Gates and a quick pickup. And Zantic gonna come through with the Sonic Wave, though it's not enough damage to finish off 33. At least picks up Insania, tries with the Blood Grenade. But 33 just a bit too quick with that Drunken Brawler stance. Just gonna waddle his way out of there. So, you know, you use the Sonic Wave, you get a kill, but you lose your carry. It's not a great trade. No, it doesn't feel too good if you're Rest Farmers. Zantic, he's probably okay with that himself, but Shad is very unhappy. <laughs> Gonna get uh, two bottle refills if he wants to min-max that hard enough, but no, they are uh, just gonna get moving and perhaps try and put on some more pressure. I think these next 5-10 to 10 minutes are gonna be very important for Atlantic because like we said, it feels like each one of these movements are gonna be so integral. Realistically speaking, you're not going to be moving around that much on the Tidehunter, you wanna just occupy the top side as long as possible. Yeah. So it's just on this trio, right? The CM, Quap, as well as the Techies. Now looking at Nisha in the mid lane, but a shield rune means that you ain't doing shit. But here's that important rune, rune secure we were talking about, even Mickey joining the fray now. Yeah, jumping in, and that's one of the things the Monkey King can offer. It's gonna give them a kill on the hand skin. Still wanna keep going, they understand how strong they are, but looks like they'll just settle for the tower, at least some pressure onto it. Mickey probably. That's his, uh, that's his job done there, he's just gonna jump back to that top yeah. side. <laughs> 
Back to dealing with the Tidehunter, who is doing okay. That isn't quite on par with the Brewmaster, but I think that's to be expected considering you're laning against a freaking Monkey King as a Tidehunter. Uh, yeah. You're pretty happy with this, Azibe. I think so. I mean, ideally, you want to sort of go back to a couple of stacks, but that might sort of fall in priority to your Gyro or your Quap. I wouldn't mind seeing them uh, give him some of those resources just to propel him towards an early blink or maybe a... Uh, seems to be like he's building up perhaps a flats for his team. Which was, I mean, all these auras they can get for your gyro. Any steroid you can pump him yeah. up with, it's gonna be huge. I will say, I do think that you're right on the money. I would like to see some stacks for Tide specifically. I know Gyro loved stacks as well. I know Quoth is a great dealing with them too. But you can always make more. Have a split available in this bot side. Liquid, the angling for a fight here. And there you pair have it. Immediately, the Primal Split Brewling is coming out. It's a 4v3 situation, but they're not too bothered TPing in on the Tide as well. And maybe Liquid, they breached in a bit too far. They'll try and salvage with one kill, even using the Sonic Wave just to focus down 33. This is a full five-man rotation just to deal with the Brewmaster. They get it done. And finally, Rest Farmers are happy with, like, full-on happy. Every single one of them are fine with that. Tidehunter didn't have to use Ravage, which is best case scenario for him. Sure, you rotate, but you can Twin Gate right back up to the top lane, continue farming up your Vlads, and you have Ravage for another movement. Oh, this is cute as well, finding a stack, or maybe stacking for himself there earlier on, and going to double up in terms of efficiency. A Liquid, though, it feels like their timing still is uh, very much intact. They haven't lost much ground. It's gonna be an AD rune for Atlantic though. That's something to be concerned about. But no Sonic Wave, they're feeling confident to buy Anisha. On the front lines with the backup of Mickey, trying to pump in the damage of the Queen of Pain, and they should be able to take her down. But now TP in his shed with the call down, knocks down Nisha. And now, Mi okay, Mickey, he needs to back out of here. Static Storm buying them the space. They should be able to kill off the CM as well. Now, looking towards the Gyrocopter, he has four levels in the Rocket Barrage, trying to turn things around with the Jingdu Mastery. More than enough lifesteal. Tits come through because Mickey, he's the king of this river fight, and gets away with a double some would call him the monkey king even yeah i mean if you take a quick look at uh what subspecies of animal he is uh, some might uh you know he's he's somewhere down there but uh opposable thumbs or not he still wields that stick like a god and gets liquid a huge advantage and i think that's what's been impressive about him so far right he understands that he can get in the mix very early on and he's like you want to fight i can give you a fight yeah, it doesn't even have points into Wukong, right? It's maxed this Primal Spring, which is incredibly interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, I he understands that why. the Wukong <laughs> is... I mean, isn't it just because he wants to get more active? Like, just that yeah. reduced cooldown and the damage you can do? You have so many bits of control and just that AoE damage. Speaking of AoE damage, holy... Dude, what? <laughs> Oh, one thing about Rest Farmers, they don't care about throwing ultimates just to get a kill. They yep. commit, like, what, blast off and freezing field just for, um, I guess, Dark Willow. It's gonna open up this tier 1 tile for them. And I guess that was the main objective, especially this catapult wave. That should be a clean tier 1 tower, but the tier 1 has already fallen bottom, so Liquid, they are kind of okay giving this up. Monkey King isn't necessarily one of those heroes that's constantly gonna be farming the strip. Right, he's going to be jumping in and out of waves, he's going to be roaming around the map looking for setups. This isn't necessarily a hero that's just stagnant farming. Yeah, and uh, not stagnant at all, running to punish Hanskin for trying for some thievery here. No free money for you, dominating now on Mickey. And I really, really like this Primal Spring focus because I don't think he's going to get much leverage out of the Wukong's command. And in, in any case, it's going to limit the amount of fighting he can do. Speaking of fighting, still keeping it going here now as the Wukong's level right in tandem with the Static Storm, caging that poor Watermelon and crushes him in his own triangle liquid. They're getting rolling now with a 4k gold lead and could look for more stacks to steal with 33 joining the fray as well. They've just completely pushed Rest Farmers off this side of the map. Look at the positioning. They just have to cower behind their tier 2 area. That's not a good position to be in, especially when Liquid are taking your stacks. Your Tidehunter is not up, so you have no way of fighting if you're Rest Farmers. Right? You are hoping and praying that Tide gets up soon enough that these stacks are still alive, but they are long, long gone now.
Yeah, and this is one of the tricky things about picking the Tidehunter because you, you can kind of understand it, right? It brings the draft together, gives them that initiation and frontliner that they need. But we already talked about it. It's very awkward in the Disruptor. In fact, Disruptor long considered to be a quote-unquote counter to the Tide in the game because he can't crack and shell that shit off. And yeah. you're playing around a Ravage cooldown up against a Monkey King who's just constantly at your neck. It's it's just feeling a little bit suffocating right now as despite some early advantages found by rest farmers in the lanes, they are all trailing behind in terms of the net worth on three of their cores. Gyro does have the capability of flash farming, but his stacks are gone. So that potential is pretty much out the window. Now, like I said earlier, you can always make more. That's the good news. But Liquid, they can always take more too, right? They have full map control right now. All these tier 1 towers but the top one are gone. So this opens yeah. up a large portion of the map for them, especially with this Monkey King Disruptor. Nowhere is safe. Yeah, I think Shad, speaking of nowhere is safe, I think Shad understands that he kind of needs to get active in this game also. We already saw in his skill build, but even his itemization, just stopping by for early Falcon Blade, you know, going in for four levels in the Rocket Barrage, he understands that his damage is going to be integral to stopping this aggression from Liquid. But in return, it's going to hamper how fast he can farm. He's still doing a good job keeping up for the most part, but no real huge injection of gold for any of these calls, right? Rest Farmers, they're going to have to try and hope that fight goes well their way or try and out team fight them for now 33 aggressing onto this poor gyro is gonna call down but in out of nowhere liquid disappear with three four heroes and crush your carry all the while nisha is just farming up stacks very very nice moves from Yummy. liquid right they understand exactly how much they need to kill off any hero on the map there is no point in which liquid is over rotating i mean Maybe someone would dare say that that was an over-rotation, but I think that's exactly what you need, just in case more heroes show up. Because you are killing the carry yeah. after all, right? You'd expect some sort of reaction. I mean, the difference in moves is quite clear, right? Like, for example, with Res Farmers TP responding, they get a kill on 33, who was like, what, two, three men diving their carry or, or their supports. Now, Nisha, he's ready to fight them, playing with the beautiful balance onto three. It's gonna get turned around with a Ravage, though. Buying Res Farmers some much needed time to scream as well. Pushing Boxy back, and he, that's gonna get them to kill on the Dark Willow. Somehow, some way, the rest of the Res Farmers are able to just walk their way off. Zibbe, they can't continue to chase. Nisha will try landing that huge melt strike, but it's not gonna be enough. Sibe, the superhero in that situation, spares Rest Farmers a lot of casualties with that ultimate. Beautiful Ravage, and things from Liquid just kind of came out too late. They stacked their stuns a little bit with the Terrorize, so the Quap could have potentially died there. That would have been a better start to the fight for Liquid. And at the end of the day, if you're trading Ravage and Quap for Boxy, cool. <laughs> that is A-OK -okay with you, especially because 33 still has split and now with the radiance as well liquid can still fight yeah and that's kind of been the whole story of the liquid lineup right they can still consistently fight and they're not going to be deterred too much by that at the end of the day it's just a support kill but like we mentioned rest farmers it feels like they just need to get their way towards those pkbs chat he's still desperately working on that agonim scepter and at Zantic, all he has is mage slayer for now and 1.7k gold 1.700 gold uh, banked up not sure what he's gonna go for next but i like this itemization because i feel like it's so important even though it's been changed a little bit you need all the resistances you can get this game absolutely absolutely especially when monkey king is going for this uh not magic damage bill but the gleipnir right so all of a sudden you're doing a mix of magical and physical cloak is gonna go a long way like just a simple cloak is going a yeah. long way this game. If you're able to just get a punch out on some of these Brulings or even Nisha, no, yeah. okay, maybe not Nisha, but Boxy or even the Monkey King, some, suddenly, yeah. you know, Wukong's Boundless is doing a little bit less. Uh, speaking of the Monkey, though, somehow, even with how active he's being, he's managed to get his way towards Gleipnir. It's an item that did get a little bit of a change, but I think overall the value is still so good, especially when you can get it this early. This, I, I remember I was playing against a Monkey King recently and he picked up Light there and I was like, what, the, what is he cooking? And I took a look on like Pro Tracker and the hero. Everyone's doing it and this is a super cool build. Mickey just got Grove Bro. G -Gro Hello? Grove Bow on the Monkey King. What? Yeah, Magic M. Uh, yeah. You don't get that attack range, but maybe his options are just not too good. We, we never be. know, of course, we don't get to see exactly uh, what's going on there. But, uh, you know. Just magic amp, but meanwhile, looks like Boxy goes down a bit too far forward on his own and gets collapsed upon by four rest farmer heroes. 
But yeah, I don't think it's too bad. It's a, I, I, Once again, another item that sort of got a little bit of a nerf, the attack range bonus decrease. But that only matters for ranged heroes, right? Bossy's like, I exactly. can use this. No big deal. Yeah. I mean, sorry, Mickey's like, like, I can use this. Sure. Yeah? Same person, right? Yeah. He's beating on them. Uh, chain lightning. Yeah. Go burr. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, right? That kind of sums up Monkey King right now. There was a while where it was Battle Fury. I think some people were picking a Mage Slayer sometimes, too. Nowadays, it's yeah. all about that Gleipnir. Like you said, Chain Lightning, go burr. Dude, I'm glad that we're past the Radiance Monkey King period. Do you yes. remember that? That was right, that was rough. Straight in, on to the Queen of Pain. Beautiful silence, but the Ravage again, Sibe. He's right on the money, buying his team the space. And for that, they should be able to back off. Lose Bobsy at the very least, but Wukong's command. Baiting in those two support, and they should be taken down. All down again, but Nisha, he just wants to keep it going. 33 in the mix, ready to just split. Right in the face of the Sonic Wave, and just when you thought Rest Farmers might have had a chance, Sive being pulled back into the mix. And Liquid, they're gonna collapse and kill off four. Good patience and leapfrogging their ultimates. Just baiting them in a little bit. Bossy, he looked like he was a prime target, but it was all just a dangling little fish for the monkey to strike. It, I don't know where Insania came from. It looked like I, I had to check because I thought he had a blink dagger for a second. He just kind of popped out of the trees out of nowhere. Maybe you hold the static storm a little bit longer. I think like Tidehunter is probably your main focus. But we saw in that fight, as soon as Rest Farmers used their ultimates, no freezing field, call down, Sonic Wave was kind of whiffed. You've got no more gas left in the tank. You don't really do right-click damage right now, so as soon as your slew of spells are out, you've got to retreat. Yeah, and I think the best part about how Liquid took that fight is it's a little bit ping-pong, right? They started yeah. out, jump in with Nisha, but it's not full committal. He's just kind of poking, prodding, baiting out a reaction, gets Sibe to take the, take the hook. Jumps in with a Ravage, it looks pretty decent, but they aren't able to finish off on any kills because at Xantic, he's busy trying to run away from the Static Storm. Three, getting blasted off, and Pablo... Helps his team grab that pretty high value kill. So the three going down there, but meanwhile, Liquid is taking down your torment of three. Yeah, that's called space, my friend. Space created yeah. 33. That was Absolutely. uh exactly what you wanted to do, right? No way. Value. Draw the teams to the opposite side of the map. Liquid are gonna control top, push it out, force some sort of response to this tier two tower. If it's gonna happen. And potentially just go gate and look out for a smoke play. Yeah, Liquid, they are on one right now. 9k gold lead, feeling very comfortable in this game. And still looking at their opponents with struggling items, right? It's it's the tight blink that has really helped them out here and alleviate some of the potential disasters. But the rest of the course, they still aren't there yet. Shad is finally going to pick up his Aghanims. You're looking at the BKB, just one component away. Meanwhile, Pablo with the setup, Sonic Wave and the bombs will be enough to finish off Boxy. It feels like the only person on Liquid who's dying this game, right? Yeah. Apart from him, maybe Insania, you haven't really killed off the monkey. Speaking of the monkey now, beats back Pablo, doesn't allow for any Wisdom Rune thievery. Cheeky play, you try, you know, I feel like when you're behind like this, making funny little plays like that is probably one of the best things you can do. Catch Insane, or catch Insane, catch Liquid off guard, catch Insane off guard, they definitely got Boxy off guard. Was not ready for Techies to come from his high ground. Look at Anisha now, Deso and Shard complete for this TA, just so scary to face up into. And Nisha, he's playing without fear as well, right? Even though he doesn't have something like the BKB, he understands that his team's right there to back him up and they just can't muscle through him right now, especially with those refraction charges. Liquid, I fully expect them to maybe wait for one or two more items. I'm not sure what 33 is going for next, but has picked up that Boots of Travels and the Shard. Maybe just walk into the Roche Pit, grab that Aegis and really start threatening these tier twos because they are absolutely in control right now. I think Liquid might want to wait until that Ravage gets used, so maybe bait out a fight, get the Ravage used, mm -hmm. then go into Roshan. Because heaven forbid yep. you lose a Roche fight as a TA. That does not feel good. Right? That is one of your yep. big power spikes. So you waited your entire game just for this moment, just to let it slip all away. It would be yeah. very awkward. The TA traps, glimpsing Pablo back. Nice uh, preemptive taser though. Should be able to help him get out of here, and unfortunately the Brambles off the mark. Maybe expecting... Uh, him to be in a different spot, but he found a nice little area to park his push cart into and hightail his way out of there. So, yeah. Rest Farmers, once again, able to avoid the aggression, but aggression is the name of the game, right? Liquid, they are all over your side of the map. Take a look at the amount of litter they've just left behind across the jungle. You got sentries, you got wards, you got traps, you got monkeys jumping at you everywhere. Now, Shad, 
being set up Tron. They want to try and bait out a bigger reaction for now. They're only sending Boxy into the face of the cooldowns. He's still doing a lot of magic. Dude, Shed is gonna die! Okay, I mean... Yeah, they're trying to bait out reaction, but if you're not gonna give them one, they'll just kill your carry, kill your tide. And Rest Farmers, I don't know what the hell that was. Then look at 33. He's just jumping up to the high ground because he's expecting to find some support. Sonic Wave hits nobody. And now Xantic, he might be in trouble as well. Oh my goodness, not the Astro pull to the high ground just to beat him down. Able to blink out of trouble for now. And dude, Liquid, they are diving your tier 3s. They haven't even taken the tier 2s. Mad from Pablo will keep him alive and the glimpse away from Hanskin. So the aggressors on Liquid are able to get out of dodge. I mean, these guys play with absolutely no fear, and why should they? No Ravage! Yeah, exactly. It's probably time to go Roshan. Uh, Ravage hasn't been used, so maybe Rest Farmers feel confident taking some sort of fight. But, like we've kind of talked about, without Sonic Wave, Call Down, your ultimates, you do nothing. No damage coming out right now. Gyro has eggs, Crystalis, but no BKB. There's no way he can stand his ground right now. Yeah. It's just tough, right? We've seen some gyrocopters forgo some of these early items, but it goes back to what we were saying. Shad probably feeling very pressured to join these early engagements. Gets that falcon bait, gets the crystal crystallis as well, but it hasn't really panned out, right? It didn't really translate to any fight wins. Maybe one or two pick off some boxy, and that was the main sort of thing they got done in this early game. Rest farmers still trying to hang on until that crucial BKB timing, but they only have it on the Queen of Pain. Even then, they're trying to beat Liquid with a punch here, already in the pit. This could be a good move if Liquid weren't wise to it. Scan out. Starting to hit forward. Roche, it's not dropping fast enough. They're gonna commit the freezing field as well. Liquid, this is an impending disaster. 33, he's gonna come in and split right in their face, but not if the Ravage can put a stop to it. Liquid, they're just streaming in, and the Roche is not low enough. He turn around and kill off 33, though. That's a huge one. And he wasn't able to use his out. I mean, it seems like he didn't even have it. Now Wukong's command on the high ground. They're still desperately trying to kill off the Roche, but it's not low enough. They don't have the heroes. They just get wiped apart. And gotta admit, Rest Farmers, that was ambitious to say the least. I, even with the Ravage, even with killing 33, the rest of Liquid just stream in and crush you. Yeah, they, Liquid did this cool, like, walk in one by one, where 33 is the only hero to present himself for the Ravage. And Liquid just, like you said, kind of stream in slowly. And with that nice gate from Mickey, it just absolutely destroys them with the Wukongs. Look at that damage from the Monkey King. Insane. Yeah, and I think uh, Liquid, it's funny because most of the times when you're playing your own games or you watch teams play, you want to go together, you want to go as a unit, but that's exactly what Liquid have been capitalizing on this whole game, right? They're streaming in one by one from many different angles, and they understand that the only tool you have is a big team fight Ravage. If you only land it onto one, even if you kill that individual, the fight's over. Everyone else can just use their spells with complete impunity, and there's nothing for anyone on Liquid to be worried about. Or even toss a, a shad up to the sky now as they start beating at this tower. Aegis onto Nisha, nothing to be scared about. Look at Mickey, yeah, he's just down jumping for 60, in between man. these trees. So cool. Yeah. Right, poke the knows that there's nothing uh, fun to be worried about. Yeah. <laughs> nice little pike on the, on the missile there. I forgot you could do that. Remember Support Gyro playing uh, with Forza? This was before, like, Veil got changed and Support Gyro became super meta. Uh, I do, People were, it's like, fun, just though. buying Force staff on the Support Gyro. It's very funny. Oh, the silence on the two. You always gotta be so careful. You don't know when Liquid are gonna decide to make that commitment in. They found out Shad. You'll set up as well with the Bounders. Starting to lay into him. Where is the backup? Where's the save? It's just not there, and your gyro's gonna fall. Rest Farmers, they all just have to try and stream back to base, but running away? That's a Disruptor's field day. Sibe, he's gonna get caught in the kinetic. Has to just waddle his way out of here. They're still throwing disables. Nisha's still on his heels. Now it's Xantic trying to turn things around, but just has to blink out. A bit too scary to stay in the midst of all these liquid heroes. Still coming for more. Glimpsing onto Pablo now and killing off that techies. You're just losing one by one on Rest Farmers. And you have no way of committing in the fight. Even with that Ravage back up now, Rest Farmers, it feels like they need like one or two more items to even stand yeah. a chance. They desperately need that BKB on Gyrocopter. It is not even funny. <laughs> Now with the eggs on Mickey as well. This is a monkey to be reckoned with. Jaro's back up. Ravage available. This 
might just be the go time for rest farmers. Do what they can. If they have a chance, but he just jumped into a boundless silent stop. I, I don't know whether McKay intended that, but that was perfect. Sonic wave on the fall though, but he just immediately have to blink away. What's the follow up? Again, rest farmers. They could try and look for an opportunity now. Blast off with the setup. Pablo managing to get Nishan low, but still haven't finished off the first life. They commit the split now. Pull you back on to Pablo, and this Techies is just dead. 35 seconds, 4v5 situation. No more Sonic Wave, but a Ravage. And there it is, Sibe, right onto all five members of Liquid. But it doesn't seem to be enough damage. Terrorize, run for the hills, Red Starmers. This close qualifies is not yours to get. Liquid beat down the entire side of the Radiant. I don't think there's much else to give. They'll just finish off these remit. Yeah, GG is called. GG. Red Starmers, yeah. they tap out of game number one. And this is the Liquid that we've come to love. This is the kind of game...